Yeah, um, just something that I felt like was the right thing to do, um, just under you know the uh, circumstances in in which this this thing is spiking. Um, wasn't a uh, controlled environment. It had a lot of kids that were going to be there. Um, not sure if everybody would have been vaccinated or masked or anything like that. So just decided not to put myself in that situation and obviously come back in into work and risk spreading, you know, the virus or anything. So um, just a just a decision that you know I, I talked with George about and you know kind of made that decision. Plus, the kids got the, the toys. Well, yeah, that was the main thing. That was the um, the main thing. That's what it was all about, you know, the kids and them being happy. Uh, I'm sure they were just as happy not to see me. And, and, and for them, it's all about the toys and uh, them getting a chance to experience some, you know, uh, Christmas and, 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 and some things under the tree, you know. Um, so me not being there, I'm sure they had just as much fun, probably a little bit more fun not seeing me. You've been dealing with a neck and shoulder injury. Yeah, when given the chance, you laid the wood again with your, you know, shoulder down. Where does that come from? Because it would seem like it'd be easy to just not say you missed the tackle, but that type of contact. Um, I mean, for me, if I'm out there, it's it's uh, it's gonna I'm gonna have the same energy uh, regardless of things I'm nursing. Um, whatever the case may be, um, I mean, at that point in the game, I mean, I think it was third and two or something like that. Um, and before the play, I was already kind of diagnosing some things they might have might have done, and I made up my mind before they even snapped the ball that you know, um, if I had a chance, it was it was probably going to be a, a nice collision. But I mean, like I said, I, I, I won't change how I play. That's me. I've been like that since I was a kid. You know, um, me changing now probably hurt my game and hurt the team more than anything. So um, regardless of what I'm nursing, I'm going to still have the same energy when it comes to, uh, you know, those collisions. Vic said, uh, oh, Vic said you were one of his favorite players he's ever coached. <laughs> you know he doesn't hand out compliments of time. What does that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. You know, um, you know, a coach like Vic has coached a lot, a, a ton of guys, you know, uh, a lot of different teams, you know, um, I know he's coached some of the greats. You know, um, I know that team in San Fran had two great safeties. Um, even in, in Chicago with Eddie, you know, um, but for him to uh, say that about me definitely means a lot. You know, uh, it means I'm doing something right around here, uh, at least these last three years and, you know, and getting a chance to work with him. So I, I, I definitely appreciate that. I definitely don't take it for granted. And, and you know, um, for me, it's just, just all about, you know, continuing to do things the right way, you know, whether it's in the locker room, off the field, or, you know, on Sundays. You, uh, when you unload on your tackles, you often go low, like quad, about quad high on the, on the player. When you're stinging a little bit, do you go higher? Um, I, I, I'm, in those situations, I don't really – think it's uh, part of the body that you can hit that wouldn't cause, you know, those stingers. You know, um, I just think it's more so the impact, you know. I think on that particular play, I was the middle field safety, so it's a 15, 20-yard head start, and, you know, um, just think certain situations is, is I mean, it's, it's inevitable. Um, it's going to happen, you know. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, um, I mean, it's the game we play. You know, um, it's a lot of collisions every play. You know, uh, you're going to have stingers, you know. Um, um, that's just, like I say, it's just the name of the game. I mean, it's, it's all about, you know, for me, it's all about what I do outside of those Sundays and outside of practice to, you know, get my body back where it needs to be to go out on Sundays and do the same thing, you know, over and over. Reed, what's your, what's your mindset specifically about hitting quarterbacks at the goal line? Quarterbacks? Quarterbacks. Even if you think uh, you're going out of bounds, what's your mindset? You don't get those chances a lot, so I got to take advantage of those. Um, um, I mean, obviously, one, I mean, it's definitely wanted to be clean, but for me, I mean, when they become runners, I look at them just like receivers or running backs, you know, and like I said, you don't get a chance to knock the hell out of a quarterback often, so they're trying to score. I mean, uh, I mean, I tell the guys all the time, I look at it like, you know, um, my mindset, either it's going to be him or it's going to be going to be me. And 
in a lot of a lot of situations, well, I say all the situations I've been in, I like me. So um, for you know to get a chance to you know to to put a nice hit on the quarterback, you know you got to take advantage of that. Did, did you have a chat with Patrick Sutan about that? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Um, I mean, and I mean, Pat's a Pat's a young guy. I mean, corner. I mean, I'm sure we can look at corners around the league and you know probably think their mindsets are a little different. But in that situation, I can understand. You know, with Pat, you know, kind of pulling off. Um, I mean, I don't think he would have prevented him from scoring. I mean, he probably would have laid a nice lick on him. But you know, it probably would have cost him a, a, a pretty penny. But in that situation, I can understand it. Keep your money, you know. Uh, probably don't hurt the team and get a a, a fifteen yarder, and you know it, it, it probably wouldn't have stopped him from scoring. Hey, cornerback at a premium. I asked Vic if he would have been with you, would maybe move you to safety earlier. I know you love playing corner. You played it for a long time, really well. But does part of you think you maybe you should have moved to safety earlier? Um, I talk <laughs> I talk to my agent like uh, about that all the time. Um. I mean, I I think when you think about it, and and I mean for me, uh, yeah, you think of my okay. I, I mean, I could have, but that you know, uh, for a twelve year, me being in my twelfth year now, would I be able to have played at the level I'm playing at now, and and you know, have those type of collisions for twelve straight years, you know? So I mean, I think my career unfolded the way it was supposed to unfold with me playing nine at corner and you know now playing safety. So um, I wouldn't, you know, I don't I don't have any regrets. Um, so I'm 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 very content. I'm very happy with the way my my career unfolded and where I am now. Time for a couple Obviously, more guys. Kyle uh, play. I think four defensive snaps through the first seven weeks of the season, but has been uh, as, as a starter ever since. What's just been your I guess impression of, of of how you've seen his maturation over the last. Uh, six, seven games, I guess. Um, Barry's been playing some great football for us. Um, he's a signal caller. Uh, he's a smart player. Uh, he's been doing a lot of great things. Um, and, and for me, one thing I love about him and his game, when on Sunday when he's out there, he's 110 miles per hour. And you know anybody in his way, he's, he's running through them. So I, I can definitely appreciate that. But he's been doing some great things for us, playing some great ball. Um, communicating's been, been great. Uh, between him and Kenny and, and, and between all four of us, me, Justin, Kenny, and, and, and Barron. So, um, I mean, uh, he's been a great addition. And, and you know, him being in the, in the, the lineup for us has been great. So what do you think has allowed him to catch up so quickly? A lot of guys have missed that, that early time, especially as a rookie. They don't really make up for it until year two. Um, I think the coaches have been doing a great job of, uh, you know, getting them ready for – you know, for Sundays, um, his preparation on his own, you know, um, and, and him also communicating in the locker room outside of meetings. I know I talk to him quite a bit on different things that he see. You know, he he asked me how I see it. And, and a lot of times getting on the same page with the guys around you, you know, can help you out more than anything. So um, I think, you know, his preparation, you know, him being able to, um, you know, have memory recall from practice to games and things like that, I think that's been helping him out a lot. The, uh, even though you weren't never a uh, teammate of Demarius, I understand you were as close to him as anybody in that locker room. What was your relationship, and, and how far did you go back? And, and then what did you think of how everything went down uh, with his tributes on Sunday? Um, well, we grew up about 30 miles away from each other. Um, and just being in a small, you know, small area, down in South Georgia. I mean, obviously, you hear about all the good players. So, high school, obviously, I, I had a chance to play against them in the summer leagues on um, basketball. And from there, just kind of developing the relationship. And then, fast forward to college, one of my best friends that grew up in the same city as me was his college roommate. So, um, it's one of those things where I, I spent a lot of time in Atlanta um, when I could, when I was in college, obviously, going back home. You know, a lot of my friends were there, so there's a lot of times where I would crash on their couch. You know, so I, I had a time, I had a chance to spend a lot of time with him. You know, um, as kids, college, then us being drafted the same year, two year, two picks after me. So, um, just just the the relationship that we developed over the years, like I say, as kids, um, and even now, a lot of my best friends was living in Atlanta and still.
frequently hanging out with him, you know, even with him going through all that he was going through. Um, and just phone conversations. Um, and, you know, fast forward to now, um, still to this day, um, it's, a, it's a tough one for me to accept. Um, him being, you know, obviously the same age as me, you know, um, just, just, just tough. It's tough for me, my friends, and obviously his family. Um, and I think they did a great job Sunday with, you know, the tribute um, that they gave him. I mean, we all know what he meant to this community, this organization. You know, um, him pouring his heart and soul into his career, and in in playing at such a high level, getting the chance to uh, win a Super Bowl and tons of Pro Bowls and all of that. And um, but I think. Uh, he'll mostly be remembered by, you know, the lives he affected, you know, outside of, you know, um, outside the lines, you know, the the relationships that he built, you know, being such a loving person, um, just shining light and, and, you know, giving life to, you know, a, a tons of different kids that have, you know, the same goals that, you know, we had when we were once kids, you know, whether it's from, you know, uh, his hometown, or Atlanta or here in the Denver community. So um, I think they did a great job with that. And, you know, he'll forever be, you know, a, a brother to me. Um, uh, meant a lot to me in my career. And, you know, um, on and off the field. Um, so um, definitely a tough one to, to accept. Thank you.